There is nothing new about conspiracy theories or internet hoaxes, but one report found that some of those false stories I just showed you were the most read items on Facebook heading into the election, reaching tens of millions. That's the bad news about fake news. The good news right now is the new scrutiny is already leading to some reform. But now there is blowback to the blowback. As some are trying to flip the script and say that stories about real facts are themselves just fake news. This is very important. Here is an exchange today with a former Republican Senator, Jim DeMinn, who now leads the influential Heritage Foundation. This is according to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office and the Federal Reserve in Dallas. Um, preventative care provided by Obamacare, paid for Obamacare, saves money in health care costs overall. In 2015, the cost of health care services increased 0.5 percent. The typical price increase before Obamacare, it was around 3 to 4 percent. Obamacare will lower the <laughs> deficit by $143 billion over the next 10 years. So there are pluses to Obamacare. So how do you keep the pluses and get rid of the minuses? Carol, you can put all that under the category of fake news. I can tell you, we spent this is almost $2 to the Congressional trillion dollars Budget on Obamacare. Office. And Rush Limbaugh is now telling his large audience everything might be fake news. Quote, nobody believes anything they hear anymore. Nobody trusts anything. The mainstream media has abandoned the very things that gave it credibility. The fake news is the everyday news. This is significant for two reasons. First, Donald Trump has excelled with a rhetorical style and political movement built on challenging the basic facts that underpin debates. Many of his arguments fare better when the public is confused. Trump may have never read the famous 1964 book about the paranoid style in American politics, tracing the power of conspiracy theories and political paranoia among extremist movements, but he's perfected it. Fake news fits right in, both as a source of misinformation and as this new slur against the actual news. As media critic Jay Rosen explains in a new essay, there's an organized movement on the political right to discredit mainstream journalism, its latest tactic to shout down as fake news any work of reporting that conflicts with its worldview, leaving the term useless as a fraud alert. That's number one. Joining me now to discuss is Paul Farr, a media reporter at The Washington Post. What do you make of this attempt to hijack even the term fake news. Yeah, well, I think you put it very well. Uh, the term has now been weaponized. It's been politicized. It's a way to uh, say that whatever you don't like is uh, not only untrue, but is actively created to confuse you and to undermine uh, the, the truth. Uh, so once you start down that road, facts have no meaning whatsoever. And, uh, you know, they're, to throw them all on the floor. We can't figure out which is which. Um, calling it fake news, uh, you have to make some distinctions. You have to separate out what is reportable, what is knowable, and what is factual. Uh, on one of the uh, canards I mentioned, we can put up the polling on this so-called Pizzagate controversy that there was this Hillary Clinton child sex ring, not true. Among Trump registered voters, you see there, 46% say that was either definitely or probably true. Does that concern you when the outlines of that story itself were preposterous before you even look at the underlying fact checking? Yeah, that uh, absolutely terrifies me um, because uh, if we can't in a society at least agree on some facts, uh, we got nothing to talk about. Um, you're talking about chaos now.